This is our best vMix integration ever, and it is the final destination of years of development on integrating between Skyhoy panels and vMix. It is based on our Blue Pill technology, and that is finally here to control your vMix system, and in particular, audio control with the massive amounts of level metering data has meant trouble in the past, but this is all history now. With our Blue Pill platform, we can control and monitor any number of audio sources on your vMix and with our waveboard that has Blue Pill inside, this is all baked into a single self-contained box. The waveboard is pretty cool in itself with a completely flexible channel layout with crisp OLED displays, three buttons, an encoder, and of course, the motorized fader. In this video, I'll take you through how easy it is to operate the waveboard and how to configure the panel to your specific needs. I feel like giving you a quick tour of the panel. You see it right here, it is already controlling audio sources inside of vMix. And let's just quickly go to vMix so you can see the interface here. So as I'm moving this fader, you see faders are moving inside of vMix. So obviously it's controlling something already. That's cool, right? You also see VU metering on the display in stereo. We have muting functions on these buttons that are lighting up and the displays are reflecting the muted state. Up here we have solo button and we have also a gain control on this knob. Up here we are doing balance control and so on. This is the individual channels distributed across this one. But now comes the real cool thing and that is it's not just eight channels. It is 16 channels. No, no, it's it's 24, it's 32, and even beyond 32, we have up to 34 channels configured today on this single waveboard. I just feel like quickly showing you what are you gonna do if eight faders is a little bit too little. Well, you're just gonna add a new waveboard panel. So if you had another one on the network, it would pop up here being auto discovered, but we can of course add it manually. So by going in here, searching for waveboard, we'll see that we have two versions of Waveboard. Let's go with Waveboard V2, which is the one with the cool displays here and all the buttons and so on. And now I've added a second one and you could add a third one and so on. And then you can distribute your audio sources across multiple Waveboards in this way. So that's modularity for you. And I want to also stress a point at the end of this video that it's not only about Waveboards, it's also other type of controllers for vMix, such as the Airfly, but let's wait and look at that later. Now we'll just delete this panel so we can focus on this one. But we have paging on this side. We have channel layout here with fader that controls the audio sources and video metering and all this good stuff. So let's just see this input source here. If I go into vMix and I drag this fader, you'll see that the fader is following along as well on the physical panel. So there's full duplex connectivity between vMix and the panel. And that's a huge point because this is where a lot of the R&D is going when we integrate with things. It's not a set and pray operation where we just send some position. We're actually reading it back from the system we are connecting to, if we can. One of the things that this video should demonstrate to you is how easy it is to actually manage these 34 channels we have set up today. They are already set up, so we have something to work with. Let's just go in to Reactor, which is the software running on the panel. It's accessible with a web browser. So from Reactor, which you're seeing right now, we already have 34 channels set up. And there is a number of cool things we can do here. First of all, we can provide an alternative label if we want. So let's say that the first one would be um, me, me, myself, and I. And what happens now is that in this display close to my faders, I see labels like Casper, it says myself and it says I over here. So we can provide alternative labels for each channel. And naturally they follow along as I'm changing the pages, but I can also color channels. I don't know how you will use it and that's completely up to you. So I don't even care how you're gonna use it, but I could paint this one red, obviously. So let's say everything with Casper is red. No, I prefer blue actually. So I'll just do blue and then something else which is yellow and so on. So you could just color your panel like that. By default, it is still backlit, but with a white color. So you can easily pick anything else that you would like to do. Now, there's also an easy way to orchestrate the position of these. So for instance, if I wanted channel number four here, input number four to be the first one, instead of changing all 
the audio channel numbers, I could just drag it. And now, look at the panel, I'm releasing this, and you see basically the first three channels were just pushed to the right, and then the fourth channel was put in the first place because I just dragged them around. I can even mute channels. So you see this little button, I can just press it, and I'm basically disabling channels here. If you want the master channel to be channel number 8, 16, 24, etc., on each of the pages you can navigate to, at some point you might want to put in dummy channels. You would just put in some entry in this list and mute it, for instance, and then the channel would be disabled. So there's a lot of navigational uh, things you can do here, which is really cool. And now I'll just revert that back to where I came from. Now, there, there are a few other things that we need to look at here. First of all is config. And if I click this field, you see a ton of different things that apparently can be assigned to this channel. So think about this as, um, in this case, the, the, the configuration selected was called VMix Audio Input Channels. Guess what it does? It controls audio on input channels in VMix, right? There's also one called VMix Audio Bus Control. Guess what that does? This is where you have access to your master and your buses in VMix on these faders. So this is how easily you can mix and match. But the cool thing is that many of you guys are not in a single system environment. You have maybe an ATEM switch, you're doing some weird thing over here, and you might have some other audio devices that you also want access to or to provide to some operator in a simplified way. You can pick other configurations for working with audio on TriCaster, ATEM, X32, Proji DMP, which is a direct out device, and just mix that in on the same panel. All you need to, to add these devices over here, which I'll come back to just in a short while. Now, I just wanted to show you that the vMix input channels is, is what we select here. And if I wanted to add new ones, and we could go all the way to page 34. So now we're here, we have the last two channels here. So let's just add one. And then if I have been in this field, you know, as the last thing. Oops, now I changed to Project GMP. No, I'm not gonna do that. Let's go back to input channels. So what I can do now is to duplicate this one, which is really useful if you wanted to set up a bunch of these. So let's just add a bunch of these and then see how quickly I can just press this um, duplication thing. Still, I think I need to go up here to sort of indicate that this is the last thing that I did. And there we go, thank you, and thank you. And now I have added these over here. Now, I also need to specify a device ID. Device ID is if you have multiple systems, multiple vMix systems that you wanna control. You can also do that. And in most cases, this is the number one because you have only one system and that is number one. So I'll just put in one here and then I would duplicate this all the way up to the last input. And then finally, I need to indicate what is the input number. Let's say that I just type in 35, then I can press the plus one button and it will simply add the next um, number, 36, 37, 38, to these channels. And voila, you see how this uh, last page of the controller is now populated. And now I have demonstrated colors and so on, so I don't need to do that. But that is how easy you can do these things. So there was this concern that we wanted to actually control the master channel and the buses. So let's do that instead of adding more input sources. Now, there's, you need to know the number of these channels. And uh, just take my word for it, number one is the master. So what I do now is I will go up here and then I'll add vMix bus control. And that was um, to this one. Let me see if uh, we can do this over here as well. And then I will want to add the number one here. And then in the next field, I'll just put in the number two, three, and maybe I can click plus one and five. Okay, so what we've got now is the master, bus A, bus B, bus C, bus D, and that is even shown here in the label. You also see it up here in the displays for the encoders, which in this case do not have a function because there's either nothing associated with it or you cannot adjust the balance on an output. So you have uh, muting and uh, let's just go to vMix and see how this works out because that's one thing we haven't done too much, right? But now we are looking at our master. So we are on the master bus here and I have it muted. So I can unmute it, but you can see this operation is happening right here on these buttons. and. Um, then, of course, I can move the fader for the master channel. 
I have also the ability to move it here. We see the video metering is happening for this channel. So that's all good, natural and so on. Now, how would I know that this master channel is number one? Well, you can go either by my little rule of thumb, which is master is one, number two is bus A and so forth. But if we close this down for a while, this little editor here, then we can also go and explore the vMix device core. So if I click here and click parameter list and I can search up the audio source, if I know how to operate a PC, whoops, I do not. Okay, we already see some of these audio parameters right here. And there we have audio buses. Now, what you are looking for is a so-called dimension, which is like a parameter for the parameter. That is, master is number one, bus A up to bus G has the numbers two up to eight. This is evident from this list. By the way, the parameter list is your complete overview of everything inside of vMix that we have integrated support for in uh, reactor. It is not the same as this will be a part of your configuration. It just means that if you go into configuring yourself by using the configuration tab inside of reactor, you can take advantage of any of these. So let's just go back here to reactor and then uh, the configuration tab is for those of you who will um, scare yourself off quite a bit by looking into this layer tree, which will not cover in depth in this video, but I might come back to it in the end. So it's just to say that if you need configuration ab beyond setting up the channels, like we have prepared for you in a way so you get advanced functionality really easily, then you can also customize this by substituting or adding parameters yourself inside configuration. Okay, but that's beyond this video basically. What I have shown you now is that if you want to mix bus control and input source control on your vMix system, it's pretty easy. It's just a matter of selecting the right profile out here on the first column in the um, device selector and then making sure that these numbers match up with the bus that you want to control. Before we move into a little bit of background on how to make sure your setup will connect to vMix and make all this great technology work out of the box, I want to spend a little bit of time on exploring the panels. I did it quickly in the beginning of the video, but I want to do it more in depth here. So we are basically looking now at the first page. And on this page, you see that we have the mute button down here. And uh, I have now muted this channel. So let's check it out in vMix if input channel number one is muted over here. So it seems to be this is um, unticked and now it is uh, back on track here. And uh, that's of course true for both input number one and input number two like this. So that's one thing. Another thing is that as I'm moving this fader, you see these faders are moving along. And if I do it the opposite way, just to confirm once again that the faders are gonna move along here. If you look up here, we have this solo function that I can enable and disable. And the solo feature is this little S that you find for each of these channels. So you can solo these channels um, and you could also again do it the opposite way around. Uh, this is, uh, by the way, some things in vMix, I know there are a few things I think related to multi-view and so on is not fed back from vMix to the controllers, but everything that we can read back from vMix, we are doing. So this is why we have a, a full duplex functionality between whether we operate in vMix or we do it on the panel. And that's of course a quality sign of a great integration. Then finally, we have the gain. And if we open up here, you can see here is the gain value. And the gain value is also shown here. And how would you adjust that on a button? Well, these are in fact two-way buttons and it means that they have a different behavior, whether you press them on the upper or the lower side. Um, maybe you guys know that we have four-way buttons in our controllers and these are four-way buttons. So they have sensitivity on the top and the bottom, and the left and the right. These buttons are so tiny that we can only integrate detection of the edge pressures on the upper and lower side, but it actually works. So if you look at the gain here, you can see that I can even press and hold and it's going to increase the gain value of this channel. And I can also go the other way and decrease the gain value of this channel.
And on this one, you can see this channel is uh, severely out of balance. And that is indicated also inside of VMAX on this little fader up here. So I can move this fader with my mouse. And we see this value is, of course, changing on the display. That's the full duplex functionality. Actually, I am uh, a jerk with this mouse. So I can't really. Ah, there I got it. And then, of course, this is why I want an encoder rather than the fader in the interface. There's a little trick here, and that is. With this encoder, you can you can check in and out of fine and coarse mode. Fine and coarse mode means that right now, as I'm turning it one notch at a time, it is adjusting in large steps. If I press once, I get into fine step mode. And as I'm now turning it, you see that it's like 10 times less of a change. But if I'm far away from home, I can also press and hold, and the value is going to reset back to normal zeros. One killer feature of React is that you can actually remote control your panel. Let me show you what I'm meaning by that. Inside of the simulator tab in Reactor, you actually have access to your full waveboard panel. You see, this is, if I click here, I can see the full panel. You see the video meters, you see the displays, you see all the knobs, the colors, everything is in place here in the simulation. And guess what? If I drag this fader, it's also moving along on the panel. If I move it on the panel, it's moving along inside Reactor. So the simulator is great in case your operator is away from his desk. Or whatever reason he might have to not do his job, you would be able to do it remotely from inside Reactor. And that's also a very nice feature to keep in mind for the flexibility that Skyhoy provides, putting Reactor and Blue Pill in place in all these devices and helping you to make a flexible control environment. We're almost done because now I just want to make sure that you understand a few things that you need to set up correctly in vMix. We know from our support team that there are a number of things that can go wrong because you have uh, great habits otherwise, but in this case, it might not serve you well. And one of them is that inside this configuration, you need to use this port number, not the HTTP port number, which I think is 8088. But this port, the TCP port, is the one that you need to use. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Don't get sidetracked by your habits. Otherwise, great, but in this case, not so much. And there's also another thing that you need to be aware of. In vMix 25, different from 24, there is a certain thing that you need to set up correctly, and that is documented on the Skahoy Wiki page. So if you go to the Skahoy Wiki and you navigate to Blue Pill Manuals, Device Core Articles, vMix V25, you find this page and that will tell you something about how you enter into vMix on the web controller here and then you need to have TCP API enabled. So that's one thing that you need to keep in mind before you will be successful and see the little green connected in the UI. So guys, this is it, audio control for vMix. I just want to remind you that if you have an, an AirFly, for instance, on Unisketch, that controller is so easy to integrate with your WaveBot V2. And let me just quickly give you an idea how. You simply add a panel. You would search for AirFly, if that is the panel you own. And then you'll pick the AirFly controller. It would now get added here. If it was on the network already, you might be able to auto-discover it. Otherwise, you would need to assign an IP address. But you just need to select your vMix configuration, like vMix small here. And then you already have a number of inputs defined, up to 24 apparently. But the main point is that the WaveBot V2 is going to be the master controller or the host of your guest controller, your AirFly, that will now be linked up with this one, sharing a single connection to the vMix system and making sure that these two work as one unified surface. So that's a really exciting aspect of the blue pill technology, the modularity, not only the ease of use, not only the power to connect to so many different devices simultaneously, but also the ability to integrate. Thanks for watching this video. I am um, hoping that you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on social media. Definitely do so if you want to stay updated on Skahoy News. But thanks for watching so far and hope this is useful for you.